Hi, my name is Rachel Wigington. I'm from Pickens County and I went to school at the University of Georgia for my bachelor's and my master's degree. I've been a 4-H'er since fifth grade. So I was hired as the 4-H and Ag agent for Pickens County and I've been here since January of 2016. So as the 4-H and Ag agent, I do two different roles basically. The 4-H side of it is more working with kids in the school system and out of the school system. So we do a lot of community service activities. They're um, involved with a lot of youth leadership development programs that they can do in 4-H. So one of the biggest things we do with 4-H'ers is district project achievement, which is a weekend event that they usually compete in in the spring. And they can pick any topic that they're interested in which makes it easier for them to speak publicly when it's something that they are interested in. So they are involved with that. They can do portfolios for it, uh, which just talks about everything they've done throughout the year. And it usually ties in some leadership and community service programs as well. For the ag side of the extension program, I'm involved mainly with the Master Gardeners. And they're just a group of volunteers that are interested in gardening. It's about an eight-week program where they go to classes for that time and once you pass the test at the end of the semester then you're finished with the Master Gardener trainee program and you become a Master Gardener and these people Master Gardeners are able to um, provide anyone in the in the community with any basic homeowner gardening questions that they have how to test your soil and water um, they're involved with the plant sale, of course, that they host, and they answer local homeowner questions when they call at the office. The Master Gardeners have a certain amount of hours that they have to complete every year, so it's usually about 25 hours that they have to complete to keep their status. So once you've taken the class, that's it, and you're done, uh, but to maintain your status, you have to volunteer for a certain amount of hours every year. They can do that through answering phone calls at the office related to gardening questions, volunteering at the plant sale is a way that most of them get their hours. Um, they're also in charge of doing the landscaping for Habitat for Humanity and the local gardens. We have one uh, master gardener who's really involved with ACES, which is the Appalachian Children's Emergency Shelter, and they have a community garden there that they're working on and now CARES also wants to do a community garden to help with the local food bank. One of the things that we're starting in August is a program called the Master Gardener Sprouts. So this year we're going to offer it as a trial run to um, third graders at a local elementary school. And it's a very hands-on gardening program where you don't need an actual garden so we can go into the classroom and just kind of bring little bits of supplies here and there and it has a lesson with it. It's very hands-on so they can learn about gardening without actually having to have a garden at the school. So some of the 4-H programs that we have, we offer them locally and there are programs that are offered by the district and state 4-H office. So district project achievement, it's offered through the district. So each district puts on a district project achievement and the winners from that go to the state level. So you can do district project achievement at least twice a year if you win first place at the first event. So we have district project achievement. We also have local um, teams for anything like poultry judging, wildlife. We have consumer judging where they judge things like the quality of jeans or alarm clocks or food or anything that you would buy as a consumer. And then we have our shotgun team, which, and a lot of these are led by volunteers, which is great because there's just not enough time, you know, to do all these programs by myself. So having someone who's really knowledgeable about shotguns is better, you know, than someone like me doing the shotgun team. So um, we have really great volunteers who are in charge of that, which we appreciate, and 
Um, so they're in charge of the shotgun team, which is part of this whole other thing called SAFE, which is shooting awareness, fun, and education. So an archery program is also in the SAFE team category. And so we're right now we're really looking to figure out how um, to recruit people for the archery team, which is coaches, volunteers, and kids. So to be in 4-H, typically they're looking for 9 to 19 year old kids to be enrolled and eligible to be in the 4-H program, which is typically about 5th grade to 12th grade. Sometimes we get some 4th graders who meet that age requirement as well. In the schools, we go in um, for 5th grade, middle school, and high school. So once a month I go into the schools and we go over curriculum that was designed by the state 4-H staff that also helps students and teachers meet the, some of the standards um, that Georgia curriculum requires. So sometimes teachers don't have time to teach things like finances or school gardens and so that's where I come in and help in teaching about school gardens and healthy lifestyles and finances and stuff like that. So Clover Buds is a program that is actually offered to kids younger than nine years old, so it gets them involved with 4-H at a younger age. It's available for preschool through third grade students, and it's a fun activity. It's just a once a month program where kids who want to be in Clover Buds can come to the office, and it's basically just another in-school club meeting, except it's offered to younger students, and it's here at the 4-H office. depends on what you're involved with. So most of the time with state events, sometimes it costs money. Um, luckily, sometimes we have people who like to donate money for kids who won first place at district and now they're going to compete at state. Sometimes we have people who donate money for the kid to go to that. Um, to be on the shotgun team, it does, there is a fee because, you know, they're buying all the supplies by themselves and the 4-H program doesn't buy any of that. So it's all um, through, student fun, or through student fees and registration fees and, um, of course, local donors, people like Bargain Barn and um, organizations like that that are buying materials. But there are a lot of free things that we offer. In the summer, we offer summer camps that kids can go to where they can travel to different places. There are five 4-H centers in Georgia and so you can either go to camp in the mountains, you can go to camp at the beach. We have two beach locations. There's one camp in the city which is where we're going um, for fifth and sixth grade this summer and then of course there's Rock Eagle 4-H Center which is probably one of the most recognized 4-H centers. So kids can go to that and that's a lot of fun but if for the students who don't go, or for, you know, just anyone who wants to spend their summers doing fun things. We have summer 4-H programs here, which are just little small day camps, and sometimes they're led by me, but they can also be led by any um, senior or middle school 4-H'er who wants to build opportunities for their portfolio that I mentioned in district project, for district project achievement. They can build their portfolios by teaching classes, and it's fun for kids to show what they're interested in. So like this summer, we're supposed to have, in the works, we have planned for a, a horse camp where they can learn about different parts of the horses. Um, they make treats for horses, like little snacks, and um, we also have someone who wants to teach guitar lessons, so it'll be fun, and one time we might have, you know, short cooking lessons offered. So it's really, it's just whatever a senior 4-H or a middle school 4-H or wants to teach other younger kids. I started 4-H in fifth grade and the first thing I remember is the 4-H agent coming in and advertising summer camp and that's when I really got interested because they told me you know, to be first picket for summer camp or to register early for summer camp, you had to do DPA, the District Project Achievement. And so I, you know, just wanted to do anything that I could get involved with so I could go to camp first or sign up for camp first. So I did DPA and I played piano growing up, so I competed in that. And then in middle school, I talked about marine resource ecology. I talked about turtles and their habitat. 
and then in ninth grade I talked about money resource management and then in tenth grade I talked about fruits, nuts, and vegetables, specifically talking about tomatoes and a project that the University of Georgia was doing here as a test plot in Jasper and so I paired with them and talked about their progress and everything and I actually won first place in that so I went to state in 10th grade and then I mastered so um, that was that was the end of DPA for me because once you master in DPA uh, you can't master or compete again so other kids have chance to compete. I really wanted to go to district project achievement the, the year after I mastered though so I did actually run for a board, um, the Northeast District Board, so um, it's just another thing that I could do to see people, you know, in other, in other counties and hang out with them, so I tried that. <laughs> when I was out of high school and graduated, I was actually a camp counselor at the Rock Eagle 4-H Center. I did that for three summers, and then uh, I was in collegiate 4-H at UGA where we hosted events like Weekend in the Classic City, which is an event that is offered to um, high school students. And they can come and they learn about college and how to you know, pay for tuition and how to apply for college and what it's really like when you're there. And um, after that, I was the Madison County, or I was one of the Madison County 4-H program assistants, and now I'm a 4-H agent here. We're always looking for volunteers and donors, of course. Um, anyone who wants to volunteer has to go through a background check and send in a short little application to the state staff to be approved as a volunteer, because of course we want safety to be the first priority for all of our children. So anyone can volunteer though, and we have a lot of areas where they can volunteer, and if we don't have an area, for example, archery right now since we're not offering the ar archery program because we don't have volunteers and enough kids interested in it at the moment. If we found a volunteer who would be willing to lead something like that, of course, we would welcome them. Anyone who would like to donate as well can always either come to the office or mail their check to the extension office.